Today's lesson is Charles. Hi, everybody. My name is Roger, and I'm Mike. And the title of our article for today is Charles. No, we're not talking about the King of England.、Um. Now we're talking about just a fictional character in a story called Charles. And this is a story written by Shirley Jackson, the American writer who also wrote The Lottery. If you're familiar with that story, and this story was published way back in 1948. But it is a cute story, and we're going to talk about it today. And you might. I noticed there that the title is a little unusual because the name Charles is surrounded by those quotation marks. So clearly, this is a man or a boy's name, Charles. But it's also something that's kind of drawing our attention to: is it a person's name? Who exactly is this? Charles person. We're sort of stating the character's name without giving you any other information about it, and those quotes kind of can make you think that perhaps that isn't the person's name, or there's something going on with this character, Charles. All of your questions will be answered once we start reading. So let's start reading. Charles, when Lori returned home from his first day of kindergarten, his mother noticed a change in his manners. The boy slammed the front door, threw his cap on the ground, and spoke rudely to his father. When asked how school went, Laurie replied that he'd learned nothing. However, he did mention that the teacher had spanked his classmate Charles for misbehaving. 大家好，第一部分我们可以看到动词 slam， 它指的是砰的关上，使劲扔，或是猛烈抨击。例如。Megan slammed the door to her room after arguing with her parents. Megan 在跟父母争执后甩门进房去了。再举一个例子 ，The politician slammed the newspaper report as inaccurate. 那名政客痛批报纸报道的内容不实。Okay, so let's summarize our story for today. Here's what happens: When Lori returned home from his first day of kindergarten, his mother noticed a change in his manners. Now we should mention here, Lori is a boy's name in this particular story. Any Lories that I've known in the past were girls. That does not mean that you can't use the name Lori for a boy. Evidently, it's possible to do that. Have you ever known any Lories who are boys? No, I don't think it's used for a boy's name so much these. Days. Anyway, so here's Laurie. He's a young kid. He came back from kindergarten, so he's what around six years old, something like that. And his mother noticed a change. He kind of seemed different. He wasn't the little boy that she knew, and it was his behavior that was causing her the most concern. It says the boy slammed the front door, threw his cap on the ground, and spoke rudely to his father. Well, that is a change, and it's probably not a change for the good because it seems he's gone from, I guess, being a polite boy before to being kind of rude. He slammed the door. When you slam a door, you close it very, very loudly. You throw it closed or push it closed with great force. It makes a big banging noise. People might turn there and pay attention to you and say, "What's wrong with you?" It might have been an accident. Maybe the wind slammed the door closed, or maybe you really are angry. And of course, it can also disturb. Other people, so try not to slam doors. And then he also threw his cap on the ground. He's throwing his things around as if he's in a very bad mood. And then he spoke rudely to his father when normally he would have been very polite. In this case, or on this day, he was quite rude, quite short with his father, and he spoke to him in kind of a disrespectful way, which seems very unusual for young Laurie. Yeah, if you speak rudely, you do not have good manners. If you've got good manners, of course, you say please and thank you and things like that. You ask permission to come in. You help other people, etc. You have good manners, but he's got some bad manners today. Slamming the door, throwing his cap on the ground, and saying mean things to his father. Get out of my way, Dad! I want to get inside the house. So that says speaking rudely to your father. And when asked how school went, Laurie replied that he'd learned nothing. So I guess his first day of kindergarten did not go well for him. How did your first day of school go, Lori? How was your first day of kindergarten? I didn't learn anything. It's a waste of time. 
Hmm, interesting. However, he did mention that the teacher had spanked his classmate Charles for misbehaving. Okay, so this is the one story he kind of did bring back from his first day at school. There's this other kid in his class, another boy named Charles, and the teacher had spanked this boy. When you spank someone, you kind of put them over your knee so that they're sort of facing the floor, and then you use your hand to hit their bottom, to hit their bum. This is what some parents would do to punish their children. If the children are rude or misbehave in some way, the parents will throw them over their knee and spank them. That is hitting them with the flat open hand on the bum. All right. So it's sometimes considered to be okay. These days, not so much. In the older days, I think it was more common to spank your kids. These days, you know, psychologists and educators say maybe it's not the best way to discipline your kids, but some parents still do it. You're not hitting them to cause real physical injury. You're hitting them to, you know, scare them or make them feel humiliated or whatever the reason is. So it is sort of a violent act, but not a kicking them or something like that. But people do it when their kids might misbehave. That is behave badly, break the rules, do something rude, do something socially unacceptable, doing something that the parents have told them not to do. Yeah, Charles was misbehaving. He was getting up from his seat without permission. He was、uh, causing trouble. He was making noise. He was throwing chalk across the classroom. He was tipping desks over. So yes, indeed, he was misbehaving. And of course, the teacher spanked him as a form of punishment so that he wouldn't do it again. Okay, that brings us to the end of the first part of our lesson. Let's move on now to the second part and continue with our summary of Charles. Over the following weeks, Lori returned from school with more stories about Charles's mischief. Charles threw chalk in class, refused to sit down, and acted aggressively toward the teacher. Hearing these stories, Lori's mom became fearful that Charles's bad behavior would rub off on Lori. In fact, when he was home, Lori seemed to mimic Charles's disruptive manner. As the weeks progressed, however, Charles began to improve. He'd even become the teacher's helper, according to Lori. 第二部分我们看到名词 mischief， 它的意思是捣蛋、淘气或是恶作剧。例如 ，The three children were punished for their mischief. 那三个小孩因恶作剧而受到了惩罚。再来，我们介绍副词 aggressively， 它指的是挑衅的、有攻击性的或是积极进取的。例如。The dog barked aggressively at the strange man near the house. 那只狗对着房子附近的陌生人凶猛地吠叫。或者 ，The salesman aggressively tried to sell his product. 那名销售员积极推销他的产品。另外，去掉这个字的字尾 ly 就会变成形容词 aggressive， 意思是有冲劲的或是侵略性的。例如 ，You must be somewhat aggressive if you want to succeed in business. 如果你想在商业界成功，就必须得有些冲劲。再来看一个例句 ：This football team is known for their aggressive style of offense. 这支美式足球队以侵略性的进攻闻名。接下来我们看到名词 behavior， 它的意思是行为或是举止。举例来说 ，Randy regretted his bad behavior. Randy 对自己的恶行感到很后悔。又或者说。The mother told her children to be on their best behavior during the dinner. 妈妈告诉孩子们在晚餐时要表现出最好的举止。另外，补充这个词的动词 behave, b e h a v e, behave， 它有表现或是守规矩的意思。例如 ，Eric always behaves politely towards his teachers. Eric 对他的老师们总是表现得很有礼貌。或是。Shelly told her daughter to behave herself while they were in the doctor's office. 在门诊时 ，Shelly 告诉女儿要守规矩。Okay, so let's continue with the story here. It says, over the following weeks, Lori returned from school with more stories about Charles's mischief. So remember, Lori has just started to go to kindergarten, and the first paragraph talked about the end of the first day of kindergarten. So over the following weeks, 
He kept coming back from school, and he kept telling his mother or his parents stories about this kid named Charles, and he was talking about his mischief. Mischief here just refers to when you misbehave, when you're doing naughty things, and the adjective for that is mischievous. Oh boy, he's been really mischievous today. He got in trouble at school. I should mention that the word mischievous is often mispronounced as mischievous. It's one of those words that is mispronounced so often. A lot of people think it's the real word, but technically the correct form is mischievous. If you show mischief, you are mischievous. All right, so he's getting into trouble. He's breaking the rules. He's doing things that he knows he shouldn't do. He's getting into mischief. Here's some good examples of the type of mischief some kids can get into at school. Charles threw chalk in class. That's a no-no. Refused to sit down. That's breaking the rules. And acted aggressively toward the teacher. That's actually a little bit worrying,、Ooh. but these are definitely things you should not do. Throw chalk. The chalk is that white stuff that teachers use, or maybe used to use, to write on a blackboard. So he's basically throwing chalk or pens or you know something like that around. He's refusing to sit down when it's time to start the class. The kids are sitting down and you know settling in to study, and he's not. He's running around. He's playing. He's not listening to the teacher's instructions. And then he acts aggressively towards the teacher. When you're aggressive. You're sort of trying to scare people, intimidate them. You're kind of acting as if you're going to attack them, as if you're going to hit them, as if you're angry with them, and you're trying to intimidate them by looking at them, by speaking to them rudely, by challenging them to a fight of some kind. So that's kind of what he's doing. He's not being a nice, peaceful, well-behaved kid. When the teacher tells him what to do, he says no and shut up, and you can't tell me what to do. And you know, the teacher might even be afraid that this. Charles kid is going to attack her, hit her, kick her, or something like that. That's the kind of behavior that you would expect from an aggressive person, but you wouldn't expect it from a school child, especially a kindergarten kid. Yeah,、uh, yeah, they're a little young for that.、Yeah. And、uh, hearing these stories, Laurie's mom became fearful that Charles's bad behavior would rub off on Laurie.、Mm. Uh, your behavior, of course, is how you act. And Charles here has bad behavior. He's naughty. He does not behave himself. And、uh, Laurie's mother is afraid that、uh, Charles will be a bad influence on Laurie. His bad behavior will rub off. On Lori, so rub off on something or someone just means this thing influences you, and you start to adopt those certain behaviors. As if you're walking by a wall, and some of the paint rubs off on your、mm. clothes or something like that. In fact, it says when he was home, Lori seemed to mimic Charles's disruptive manner. So this is kind of like how he was behaving at the beginning of our story. He's behaving badly at home, badly like his friend Charles behaves in school. It's like he's copying him. That's why we use the word to mimic. To mimic is like to copy. When you're doing what another person does, acting as if you're their mirror image or something like that, you're copying them. And in a less direct way, you know, a young kid might mimic their older brothers and sisters. They're sort of looking at them as an influence, as a role model, and they're copying them. Maybe not exactly as if you're copying someone in a game and doing exactly their motions, but they're doing things the way another person. Person would, as a form of imitation, or as a form of learning, or flattery, or something like that. In this case, it's not a good behavior that Laurie seems to be mimicking. It's disruptive behavior, disruptive manner. When you disrupt things, you sort of cause trouble. You interrupt them. You're causing all sorts of extra problems and headaches to people. If you're being disruptive in a social situation in a public place, people might tell you to stop it or be quiet. They might call the police. They might ask you to leave. It's kind of unwanted, aggressive, and impolite behavior. And as the weeks progressed, as time went on, however, Charles began to improve. So I guess Charles began to realize that such behavior is not beneficial to himself. So he started to improve his behavior. He'd even become the teacher's helper, according to Lori. So yes, we could say that Charles had a big turnaround. He turned over a new. Leaf. He was no longer a naughty kid. He decided to actually be cooperative, and he actually 
became the teacher's helper. He helped out the teacher in the classroom, maybe preparing the desks and putting the chalk on the、uh, chalkboard and erasing the chalkboard or whatever. Yes, indeed, he kind of became, I guess, the teacher's pet, as we could say. Okay, that brings us to the end of the second part of our lesson for today. Let's listen now to the third part. On the day of the parent-teacher meeting, Laurie's parents arrived at school, curious to see Charles. Laurie's mom introduced herself to the teacher, who promptly assured her that Laurie had made significant progress, despite his initial difficulty adjusting to school life. Laurie's mother replied that if her son had been naughty, it was likely due to Charles's negative influence. But the teacher looked confused. Charles, she said, "We don't have any Charles in the kindergarten." 最后第三部分，我们看到单词 assure， 它是动词，指的是向点点点保证，或是使确信、放心。例如 ，Louise looked very tired, but she assured me that she felt fine. Louise 看起来很疲累，但她向我保证她没事。最后一个例子 ，Howard assured his boss that he would have the work finished on time. Howard 向老板保证自己会准时把工作完成。Okay, so of course, part of school involves parents and teachers getting together to discuss the students, how well they're doing in school, whether they're behaving or not, some ways they could improve their behavior or their academic performance. So on the day of the parent-teacher meeting. Laurie's parents arrived at school, curious to see Charles. So we've got Laurie's parents going to school, and they've heard so much about this Charles kid that they'd actually like to meet him. Yeah, Laurie, tell us about Charles. Introduce him to us. Oh, all right. They're going to finally be able to find out who's been influencing their son so much. And then we read Laurie's mom introduced herself to the teacher, who promptly assured her that Laurie had made significant progress despite his initial difficulty. Difficulty adjusting to school life. All right, this is a pretty normal parent-teacher meeting interaction. The parent, in this case, Laurie's mom, introduces herself to the teacher. Hi, I'm Laurie's mom, and the teacher is happy to meet her and finally get to know what Laurie's parents are like. Well, the teacher had good things to say about Laurie, so this is good. The teacher promptly assured her, Laurie's mom, that Laurie had made significant progress. He had developed well. He's been learning in noticeable ways. Not just small improvements, but big improvements, and this is what the teacher promptly assured Laurie's mom. To do something promptly is to do something kind of quickly, without wasting time right away at the very beginning. She said, "Oh, you're Laurie's mom. Oh, he's been doing very well. He's improved a lot." That's kind of just how she told her. She told her quite quickly, and she assured her that Laurie had made this good progress. When you assure, you kind of promise or guarantee. Oh, believe me, I'm not exaggerating. You can really trust. My words, Laurie is doing much better than he used to. He's doing much better, despite even though he had initial difficulty. Even though at the beginning he was not doing so well, he had this difficulty adjusting or changing himself, sort of fitting in to the new way of life at school. Not having your parents around, having to be responsible and get along with your classmates. These are some of the adjustments, to use it as a noun, that you have to do when. You go from you know being a little kid at home to being a school kid in school. You have to change yourself. You have to adapt to a new situation or adjust. Right. You need to make some changes so that you can work better in the situation. This could also be applied to machines or devices. My watch is fast. I need to get it adjusted. I need some、uh, little changes made to it so it can work better. And yes, indeed, if you head off to university or if you go off to school or if you start a new job, you need to adjust. To the new situation, so that you、uh, feel comfortable. Now, Laurie's mother replied that if her son had been naughty, it was likely due to Charles's negative influence. So, yes, the teacher said, "Hey, don't worry, your son is improving." And Laurie's mom said, "Well, it's not really his fault. If he had been naughty, it's probably because that Charles kid has been a bad influence on him. It was likely due, or it was because of Charles's." Negative influence. So my boy probably is normally a pretty good kid if it weren't for that mean boy Charles.
Falls. And it's at this point that the teacher starts to not quite understand what Lori's mom is talking about. This Charles kid who's influenced Lori? Uh, the teacher doesn't understand this. It says, but the teacher looked confused. So yeah, when you don't understand what someone's saying, it doesn't make sense to your brain. You can get confused. Charles, she said, this is the teacher speaking, Charles, we don't have any Charles in the kindergarten. Dun, 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 dun. So there is yeah, no weird. Charles. Lori just invented Charles as a way of sort of explaining his own bad behavior. Supposedly, Whoa. that's what it looks like here, but it could be something else. We're not quite sure. But in any case, that's how our story ends. It's time now to listen to Hanny, our beloved Chinese teacher.各位同学大家好，我是Hanny。我们来看今天的文法重点。课文第一部分的最后一句写道：Laurie有提到老师因为同学Charles行为不当而打了他的屁股。好，文中他用到动词misbehave来表达行为不当。那他是由自首mis表
Mary was known for causing mischief whenever she had the chance. Aggressively. The dog barked aggressively at the mailman. Behavior. David praised his students for their good behavior. Mimic. Some species of birds are able to mimic the sounds of other animals. Promptly. The waiter said that the food would be delivered promptly. Assure. Before Jack left for his trip, his friend assured him that his pet would be taken care of. Adjust. When you move to a new country, it takes time to adjust to the different customs and way of life. Discussion starter starts now! Here's our discussion started for today. The question is, do you think Charles is simply an imaginary child that Lori created to explain his problems at school? Why or why not? Well, I'm not a child psychologist, but I would say yes, I believe Lori created Charles to excuse his own behavior since young kids do often invent imaginary friends. And maybe this was just uh, Lori's way of adjusting to his new life at school and, you know, sort of learning how to uh, interact with other kids and with the teacher, which is all a new experience for him. Hopefully he'll sort of get over this phase in his life because otherwise, if he has an imaginary friend when he's in university, I would start to worry about him a little bit. Perhaps, but actually I think that Charles is real <laughs> because this story came out in 1948, right after the end of World War II. And remember, pilots during World War II were uh, mentioning sightings of Foo Fighters, which could be UFOs. So I think Charles is actually an alien from outer space trying to infiltrate the education system of the United States and cause trouble for a future invasion. Well, that brings us to the end of another edition of our program, and please make sure you join us again next time. From all of us here, I am Mike. I am Roger. See, See you next time. time.